Welcome on in everyone to uh, Saving Throw Show for uh, RPG Exploration Society. We Tonight is the second part of our two-part uh, Learn to Play for uh, The Few and the Cursed, which is a, cur- a RPG from uh, Rock Manor Games, which is currently live on Kickstarter. And if you want to know more about the game uh, or start backing it, you can hit uh, exclamation point RPG ES in the chat and you'll find the link for that and get in on uh, that th- and this wonderful game that we've been enjoying the heck out of. Uh, but before too long, uh, we should probably get started. So let's go around the horn and uh, introduce everyone starting once again with uh, our, our shepherd for this game, uh, the person who's who's running it and teaching us how to play, Scott. Hey everyone, it's uh, Scott Ewells, Trail Master of this game and creator of the Few and Cursed RPG. Thank you. Thank you for uh, running us through this. Uh, Randy! Howdy, howdy. Randy Alvarenga here. Uh, I'm playing Davis McLaren, our scholar doctor treasure hunter. In that order. <laughs> Ronald. Hi, folks. I'm Ronald Neely, and this evening I'll be playing Amos Jakeaway, a farmhand, blacksmith, and possible ne'er do well. Oh, okay. Uh, Aliza. Hello, I'm Aliza Pearl, and I'm playing Cassidy, no last name, or that you know, uh, and she is a gunslinger, cursed chaser. Fantastic. And I'm Eric. I'm playing Hamish Gunderson, the outlaw uh, miner who's, you know, He's, he, he, he is definitely a ne'er-do-well. <laughs> uh, but without further ado, let's get into this game, shall we? All right. We last left your group in some kind of underground basement room under a you know, gambling den of sorts. Um, and you were surrounded by barrels of water, of which four were offered to your group to do a task for the Council of New Jing City council made up of uh, seven members from various backgrounds that sort of help run the city but at your feet is the one of the fallen immortal bandit survivors that was at the gate that you dealt with uh, when you were coming in so we have this moment for you all to address that but you've been given a job essentially to go to this uh, mine that they have outside of town and you know figure out what's going on there particularly because they they interrogated this person and found out that the fallen immortals have some kind of base there and potentially have killed or captured the miners there if they're alive you know rescue them and bring them back if if not then you know whatever else goes on there that's sort of unknown Um, but that's where we have you all right now in this dark dank room surrounded by highly important people in this town um, while Hamish has a pocket full of uh, water tokens, uh, ration tokens, as they were called, uh, that he stole from above. And the rest of you uh, agreed to this job so that you can move forward um, and find out more about the white demon, potentially. So you have this uh, bandit. You did uh, last time, right before we left, you did get permission to speak with this person. Um, and then you were shown the water that you'll be given, which is several days worth of water uh, each. So um, we should start with that. You wanted to talk with the bandits. Who wants to talk with the bandit? And what do you want to? What do you want to ask? I definitely want to ask about uh, the white demon and if mm-hmm. they've like what he knows about it and what the rest of the immortals sort of know about it. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, actually, and if if it comes down to it. Uh, I would like to assist by like maybe intimidating the bandit a little bit okay. so that essentially like they don't withhold information that mm-hmm. uh, that uh, that he asked for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and I, I can I, and I can actually open with a statement if 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 y'all allow me. So Amos kind of walks up to the walks up to the bandit. It's like I. Uh, <clears throat> so, my friend here is going to ask you some questions, and uh, you ought to be truthful and uh, forthright in answering those questions, because my friend, pretty peaceable, doesn't mean any harm, and generally just wants to go about their bi- they business as uh, as frictionless as possible. 
on on the other hand that sketchy white boy over there and the the young miss with a steely glare have no problem with leaving you here bleeding if uh if your answers displease hear me all right now and i step back all right so then in do you want to make the uh <laughs> sorry, sorry do you want to make the intimidate roll and see if you uh do you effectively do that that's fair oh sure i, I mean i like i like what you said i'm gonna roll with it but uh at the same time i will grant you advantage for the fact that you pointed out your steely-eyed friends and your ne'er-do-wells in your group to add to that amos just oh. like smiles uh uh <laughs> And he's obviously missing a couple of teeth, but just like <laughs> and, and Cassidy um, just glares, as described, glares. And uh, for the advantage, it's the and uh, tens die. So you re roll an extra tens die or re-roll the tens die, and you choose the better, the lower of the two numbers. Gotcha, gotcha. Oops. You know what? Let's roll since i lost the other one under the table uh well a 13 under was that uh 13 like 40 or under something. uh yeah 55 13 under 55 will that do that will do that will do really well that's actually for you three degrees of success mm -hmm. um that's Fantastic. exactly the number you need for that so yeah a 13 will certainly cause this person to shake in their boots um Intimidate does work the same way as Charm, except that it works in the way that he will probably not like you after this, but you weren't trying to make friends, right? That wasn't your goal here. Surely not. <laughs> uh, so yes, he will start, uh, like, he'll glance over your shoulder at the people that are behind you, the people you pointed out, and he'll start to, like, get this look on his face. His eyes will get wider, and you can tell that he's understanding what you're saying, even if he maybe doesn't necessarily understand all the words that you said. He gets the gist. All right. So then uh, Davis walks up. He's got a little uh, piece of some writing, like paper mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. pen. And he's like, okay, so I know my friend gave you the rundown. Let's hope that this ends as amicably as possible. So um, we have a couple of things we're looking into. The first being... Uh, this base of yours over at the mine, what can you tell me about that? He uh, glances over his shoulder quickly, and one of the guys that's standing there, one of the people that are in robes that seems to be one of the people in charge, kind of translates what you're saying into uh, that language that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then he says some things back, and the translator, this, this person on the council is now actively being your translator, says, the mine is a water mine, and they're... Um, based there, he says. It's large, and the horses are in a cavern, I think. And then what the guy with the handlebar mustache goes, yeah, a, a tunnel or something. All right. Well, that's great. Uh, what are your defenses like? In, in case someone were heading that way, you know. <laughs> There's a, another brief exchange. And then he says, uh, it seems they have no defenses. They have just taken it there inside. And because it is a cave, they can hear any approach. Fair. Fair enough. Um, and now we're going to get to the interesting thing. And he sort of leans in close. And he's like, so tell me about this white demon everyone's talking with, about. With the word white demon... Uh, he he the person just reacts because he can understand enough of that that he then just starts rambling for a second and the other guy they go back and forth and then he says he said a lot of things but the white demon uh is not here he said and they have abandoned him or it has abandoned them hmm Interesting. I, I, I look back to my friends. Um, what do you think that could mean? Hmm. Why don't you ask him? Huh. And I look uh, over at, at the man, and then I look at the translator, and I go, can you ask him to expound on that, please? 
Sure. And then they talk for a second, and he says, the white demon is trapped somewhere in some vault, it sounds, but the leader, um, the Masenas, he took his men and traveled. Um, this, this bandit here does not know where, but they have remained to build some stronghold, but they don't have the power of the demon anymore, just the relics. And you see this just like little gleam in his eyes as he hears sort of the relic part. And he's like, okay. <clears throat> well, that's what I wanted to know. Any further questions? Uh, approximately how much uh, value might be one of these here relics? Well, it depends on who's buying. The uh, guy start, the translator starts saying without even actually talking to <laughs> the bandit. <laughs> Certainly, certain individuals might pay more, and others would not understand its actual value. And then the council, they kind of start mumbling amongst each other in various languages. Uh, not to change the subject from the relic, but did we already find out how many people to expect at this mine we're going to? Nope. That's the right questions to be asking. Thank you. Um, can you tell us that? <laughs> there, he, he talks for a second, and then the translator says, there were four when last he left, but there were more. He left with three. There were four remaining. But Where there are the were some others scouting. Ah, so, so two scouts and four mm, back at the mine. That's what he said. It, does the does the count the does that count the guy upstairs who unfortunately was not in the best of situations? Yes, he said he left. There was three that left him and his two companions. Okay. I think we've accounted for those. And how and about uh, how stubborn might your friends be? Like, like not that I am opposed to to doing some killing, but like you know, yeah, how many I got to kill before they gave up, or is it like a all or nothing sort of thing? They talk and they go back and forth, and it's it turns into kind of a heated discussion. And then the translator looks up and says, "He seems to think that." they will all die before surrendering. But I pointed out that he surrendered before dying. But then he said that they don't follow, some of them don't want to follow the new leader. So there's a possibility that not all of them will continue fighting. Hmm. Yeah, well, when the bullets start flying, a lot of men change their tune. Got that right. It's very interesting. Just out of curiosity, what uh, new leader, what uh, what caused the schism, so to speak? He says something, and the translator looks up and says, a change, a transformation? Hmm. Monstrous? Uh Apparently English. I'm sorry, what what was that? <laughs> he, he said that he became English. Be English. Became. What? Oh. English? I didn't think that was I, something. I don't understand the translation. It, it, maybe I'm translating it wrong, but he said that he transformed into English. Maybe that's the type of monster. I was pretty I've sure. never heard of it in my well can I can I see if I ever heard of anything Ooh. like that before? Yeah, can I as well? Yeah, I mean you guys can make a, an academics role. Uh with your dark knowledge there, uh Davis, you would have advantage on the okay. role because this is about cursed object and thing. For Eliza. Yes, um, yeah. academics is not her strong suit, but yeah. 
Could it be You've more never... like just in the history of my curse chasing? Yeah, in the history of your curse chasing, you've never heard of anyone transforming into English before. That's not something you've ever heard of. But there is the the obvious transformation reference could mean that it's something curse related, right? Because oftentimes right. the people will transform into something else. Right. Um, All right. I got a uh, 49 under 75. Sure. Some cursed objects, you know, some cursed objects actually hold revenant soul pieces of people like they can hold pieces of souls in them and sometimes this means that instead of transforming into a monster an old soul piece will take over the person and that's the that's something you've heard of before uh so yeah i'm i'm not quite sure uh i i, I lean over to the translator i go ask him if this person's personality changed like very drastically after whatever mm -hmm. well, beyond exchange. just being english <laughs> they have an exchange and he says yes he seemed to forget how to fight as well uh, ah uh so the this is something i've only read about a, a, a few times but, but soul souls getting attached to these relics right sometimes it's rumored, at least from what I understand, that it can be the soul of someone else and that can change the person completely. So maybe that's what we're dealing with here. Ah, uh, transforming English. Yes. That now makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Well, uh, do we have any question, any more questions for our friend here? Seems you pretty know. straightforward to me. All right. Unless he unless he neglected to mention any of the surprises we might be walking into. I don't think so. Oh, yeah. yeah. T tell him that uh, uh, were we to come back uh, and find his information not so truthful, there will be consequences. All right. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I look at the translator and I go, please translate this word for word as, you, as best as you can, please. Um, my friends here say that we are very glad and thankful for the information he has relayed, but if for some reason there's something that is amiss with the information he's given us, and then I look back at my steely-eyed friend and the, the guy who punches like a train and our shooter, and I go, well, let's just say uh, he won't have an option to surrender next time. Like I actually look at the guy and give him a wink. <laughs> the translator begins to translate it, and you can see the uh, the handlebar mustached American guy give a smirk and a, and a, and a nod of appreciation um, at your phraseology there. And they, uh, he translates, and the person's eyes just get wider, and he just kind of like falls back a little bit as he believes the translation. So, we're heading to a mine. <laughs> Appears that way. Well, you know, it's a couple days walking, but uh, I think I can convince the men here, the women here, the, the council, sorry, can never quite remember how to refer to them all. Uh, convince them, I'm relatively new if you might have not guessed, but convince them to give you all a few horses so that it's only a one day trip over the sands. There's some murmuring. Some people clearly don't like this idea, but then he says something in like the, the worst Chinese you've ever heard before, <laughs> like that accent still in there. And then there's some, some more bickering back and forth. And then he says, all right, I can get you four horses, but you have to return them. Sounds good to me. Barring acts of God, we shall return these horses. We'll go My ahead and get water, you. though, right here, as uh, the only way I can make this agreement happen. Figured that. Well, let's go see these horses, I guess. All right. So he takes you up. Uh, 
the council kind of seems to be they like they some of them start talking to each other some of them just kind of wander off um and he the guy with the mustache he takes you back upstairs there's the gambling still going on lots of noise uh someone's someone seems to be searching for something like they're missing something they don't seem to know where it went um and then you get back into the saloon where it's very quiet the high five saloon uh, because you went through the back room to get there and then he says all right i'll take you all to the stable on the south gate uh there's not as many people there because that's uh not really gate we open except for whenever we're sending somebody out guards keep it pretty tight and then they tell everyone the cut approaches to go to the north gate that's where you were all earlier um, we'll take you over there we'll get you them horses and uh he pulls out this sort of hand-drawn map he's like this is the last map that we have of uh, how to get to the mine this might help you out it's super bad it's very rough <laughs> hand-drawn i take it look at it don't know how to read Hand it to Amos. I take it, look at it, and just somebody that somebody that didn't want to find anything wrote this up. Mm. Terrible, terrible. <laughs> well, to be fair, it was written up by them miners. Like all they need to know is landmarks, right? They don't really need to know how to actually get there. And I suppose if you stick me in the ground, stick me in the ground for upwards of. Uh, 10 to 12 hours a day, I wouldn't be in a hurry to get nowhere neither. But yeah, I just kind of give you give you all the cliffs, like I'll show the map around, give you all the cliff note version, and I'll try and uh try and sort it out once we're once we're on the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Getting to the horses takes no real time. The the city, while it being a city, is really not that big. But neither are really any settlements anymore these days. Um, it is bigger than, of course, most of the towns that you'd pass throughout in the trail. But getting there takes no time. The horses are pulled out of the stable, you know, because you have one of the council with you. So no one questions. They just get the horses. They are um, reined and they do have saddles on them. So you should be able to control them relatively easily. And then they uh, open the gate just enough for y'all to ride out. What time is it as we're riding out? Oh yeah, you can uh, you can actually stay in town if you want. It is kind of midday. -ish. You arrived early morning. You haven't been here that long. Yeah, I'm just trying. Uh, I guess this is actually a great question for us as people new to the game. Is how yeah. does water and traveling work? Yeah, <laughs> we are about to enter the third phase of the game, the trail phase. We've been doing a lot of regular phase stuff, and we did combat before. In the trail phase, things act a little bit differently. So. At the start of your journey, you'll have to make a navigation skill roll to see if you can get there in time. Uh, you have the map, so you should have advantage on that. But uh, there's some other things. Your, your survivor focuses will also affect this stuff. Uh, but along the way, depending on the length of travel, so if you succeed on the roll, then it will just be however long you thought it was going to be, so one day in this case. Um, if you fail, then you get off track somewhere, and then you end up adding a day to your trip, and that's about it. Um, but each day that passes, you will have to consume two units of water if you're average size, three if you're bigger, one if you're relatively small, and so on. Um, but these are also affected by the survival rule that you'll make each day to see if you can find a nice camp and get some water in the process. Also, um, Ronald's character, he's a forager. So on the trail, he can actually uh, forage for water and see if he can get some of that water on the trail so you don't end up using your own resources. So it's a matter of kind of planning. Usually you're going to go, we're going to this point out there. We know it will take us X amount of time. So we're going to have to make sure we have the resources for it. And so then, that's why I was asking, because if yeah. it's midday and we're just yep. starting out, we're it's the hottest part of the day for us mm -hmm. to be heading. So yeah, you will leave the shadow of the Okinawan mountains and head out into the, the flat desert for a while before you actually get to where this cave is, which is in the side of the cliff, but okay. still a distance away. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you do have some supplies. You do have some water, so you should be relatively fine for a day and back. Um, and then we, we would see if we could rely on Ronald's abilities to um, your, uh, sorry, it's, Try to forget Amos' abilities to find water along the way. Um, we also have the opportunity for some of you to use your survival focuses in ways that are slightly different than you've used them so far. 
particularly at the start of the trip, like I mentioned, there's this navigation skill roll. Now you can roll this navigate. Anyone can do it, um, but the bandits among you, this person with banditry, actually uh, knows some paths less traveled usually and has advantage on the navigate skill roll. On the trail, you also, um, you know, sometimes you can do teamwork things, but on the trail, only the person with the community special ability or the community survivor focus can assist anyone else in their role. So this would kind of be, uh, you know, Hamish all on his own to make this role, but he is a bandit. So he does have the advantage of knowing how to travel the less known paths to get places. The map will also give you advantage. You actually have double advantage um, on that role. And that's the first thing we would do. And then from there, we do some other roles as you travel on the trail. Cool. All right. So, I, so yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go, please. Uh, with your double advantage, so to explain that, um, when you have stacking advantage, when you have like stacking advantage or stacking disadvantage, it affects your roll. You will only be able to roll one additional tens die. But because you have an uh, the second advantage, you will add a plus five to your threshold. So in your case, for your character, uh, navigate is under your instinct. So instead of it being a 70 like it normally would be, it would be a 75 is what you're trying to uh, it, That's not 70. It's 10. Oh, it's 10? Oh, no, it's not. Uh, for Hamish? No, for Hamish. Hamish. For Hamish, uh, I have a, yeah, I have a, I have a 10 uh, in my intelligence. Instinct? Yeah. Oh, no, uh, no, it's instinct roll. Navigation instinct. is an instinct roll. Yeah, it should be, it should be 10, not 70, right? No, the uh, half number would be 35, so it's definitely not no. 10. Yeah. That's okay. a, I mean, the number system is bad. That is definitely a 70. And then 35 is your half number. And then okay. like 17 would be your three degrees of success. Okay. I'm looking Good at the right character sheet. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because I put, now I'm remembering how I put this together. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yeah, let's, let's, I guess I, Hamish will head out and, and like just try. I imagine he, he, I mean, he, he's spent a lot of time mining, so he understands where where you would look to find it and how, how best to like get there. And he knows like traveling like washes and all kind of, that kind of stuff. So he, mm -hmm. he would know how to ignore a lot of the gobbledygook on a map and mm -hmm. pick out the real stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the lowest I got, it, uh, that would be a... Oh, wait, it's... No, it's the tens that I re roll not this one mm -hmm. so i have to roll this one again um yeah so um double zero and three three so that's that is a three which would definitely be three degrees of success so looking at this map kind of looking at the terrain kind of looking at the horizon where you're you're headed hamish has a very good plan on where to go and will not at any point get lost on the trip no matter what happens because he's like mm -hmm. it's definitely that way i feel like he understands enough about like the flows of underground water to know like a general like as long as we're heading in this direction it doesn't matter what path i'm taking mm -hmm. absolutely so your group will not get lost which is actually important because some stuff might happen along the way mm. um so we start off leading in a in a direction that maybe seems off to the rest of you and then it starts to make sense as you start going on it you're like oh hamish knows what he's talking about I don't know why he started us going, you know, northeast to go northwest, but here we are. We're going in the right direction. Um, well, if you want to climb a mountain first and foremost, that's, I mean, that's your prerogative. So now that you're on the trail, uh, we can do this thing where uh, Amos can forage for some water to see if you guys end up using any of your resources. And then... Uh, you can salvage for stuff that you might pick up along the way if you want to. And then we'll make a survival roll uh, when the night ends. When you get to nighttime, you can't really travel in the dark anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we'll start the next day. All right. Um, I'm assuming, so for the foraging roll, that's, I'm assuming that's survival? It is survival, yes. Okay. And uh, let's see. You would have um, advantage on it from your alrighty. special ability. Let's see what it's hidden for. Uh, 
Oh, dang. Uh, yeah, I failed. Uh, lowest is a 53. Okay. All right, so it's just kind of desert. Uh, there's not really any cacti or anything along the way. So as you go through the first day of traveling out in this desert landscape, you, you aren't able to find any water in anything, even when you kind of scratch at the ground in a few places you think there might be. You don't really find any water. So at the traveling for the day, when the night hits, you'll, you guys will have to consume some of your reserves that you have on your character sheet. Sorry, all this dried in a scarecrow's cough out there. But since the reach the end of the day, you can now make a survival roll to see how well your camp is set up, which might affect the amount of resources you have to consume. So, who wants to make that roll? Survival? What what skill is that tied to? Uh, that is tied to instinct. It is under the instinct ones. This is the um, one of those ones under instinct. So, I think most of you are proficient in it. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. you are all proficient in it. Um, Who would like to do it? I don't mind doing it, but... Yeah, I, I'm probably not the best at it. Okay. Uh, Shall I? I? Let's oh. see. Well, I mean, we can just... I can just talk numbers. I'm, a, like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, like, I'm 45, so it's kind of a 50-50 yeah, I'm 50 probably the best have. at it. Yeah, I'm 45 as well. Okay. I'm 50, so not that much. 70. Oh, oh, you do uh, it. Don't totally hand, do it. Hand it. <laughs> yeah. Hamish, Hamish doesn't spend a lot of time in towns if he can help it, because he usually has to run away from them very quickly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you walked into a town and started stealing from gamblers. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 34. Yes. There we go. All right. With two degrees of success, that is absolutely the thing you need. So you find that you... Uh, you, you set up a camp in a favorable condition, and we'll talk about that in a second. But one major thing is that with two degrees of success, everyone will only have to consume one of their water units nice. because of this camp that Hamish found, sort of set up. like It was right next to some water source, just enough for everyone that you're able to, to drink some of that and then still you know, be able to go. You never cease to amaze me at your knowledge of places you've never been. How did how did you get so good? <laughs> I mean, one place is much like the other. You just I mean, it's just all rock and dirt and sometimes cacti and you know, you just you just plop down where the sun ain't hitting. Uh the the place that you found uh, is actually a ship's skeleton. Um there's some cargo inside, so each of you will gain a free item from setting up inside of this ship skeleton. And then you can make, if you wanted to find more stuff, a salvage roll. Well, what's the free item? That is a good question. So we can do this uh, through the random salvage table, which would probably be the easiest way to do it, or we can just look at the list of items. This is up to the, the um, trail master if they want to just grab some item off of the list, or make you y'all roll for it to find out what you actually got. Let me go to that page. It's right near the end of the trail master section. Man, all these notes and I don't have them organized. <laughs> all right, rid of a shable. Perpetual uh, so ten... GM feels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a random self table. So you roll a D10 and a D6, and tell me the individual like the D10, D6 numbers, so I can look at my like, cool little graph and figure out what it is that you found. Each of you. D10 right. and a D6. All right. Yeah. And D6. Mine is 92. Ooh. So a nine on the tens die, mm-hmm. and a two on the six. Mm-hmm. So guess what? Mm-hmm. You found two water units. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Some, some, you know, old canteen or something with water still inside of it you find inside the ship. Nice. Oh, this. Found us some more water. And it's your lucky day. Yeah. It sure is. I, I rolled a 13. Uh, the 10. Or a, like a 10 and a 3. 10 and a 3. Uh, you actually find three food units. Which also equals out to one water unit, but it's three food units. Huh. Yeah. Thanks. I, I look at you, like, I come back with, like, my food, and then I'm like, dang it, she found water. I thought I was being useful. <laughs> <laughs> Hamish got double fours. 
Four and four. Uh, you found uh, four rounds of ammunition. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. I got a five on the ten and a six on the six. Uh, and you found a, a set of cheap stogies. Just <laughs> cheap stogies. So you are, I think you may... Do you already have that in your inventory or is that someone else? Uh, I, 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 me and Cassidy have that. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cheap stogies. What you do is you would uh, you, they're the ten component piece value for it. You reduce it by two, so you'd smoke one of your stogies, and you would get advantage on resolve rolls for twelve hours afterwards. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> Having a smoke, relaxing. You know. That's that giving of... me very much uh, Red Dead Redemption vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so those are the free items you find. Now, if you wanted to salvage, you would make a roll against your salvage special stat, which is right next to your initiative. And that would be how we would roll this game of like finding things. We don't have to like, you know, do loot drops and stuff. You would just make the roll and then I would just give you more stuff. Um, uh, if you want. Absolutely. I'll look. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I love rolling on tables. Um, where where is the salvage? So it's it's in the center of your character sheet, uh, just uh -huh. to the right of the initiative. So it's a salvage. That's the stat you're looking for. Oh, there it is. And okay. just like everything else, it's the two ten, like the ten and the one. It's a D one. Yeah, it's yeah. a D one hundred roll, and you're yes. trying to get under oh. that number. Okay. Nope. nope. Not today. Not today. Eighty nine under or over fifty two. So nope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got. That looks like a 10. Yeah. Straight 10? Straight 10. Nice. Nice. Right? Wait. A yeah. 10 on the 10s die uh -huh. would be 10s, not... It, it would have to be zero, 00 to be 100, right? Correct. It would be three zeros would be 100. Yeah, so it's 10. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I rolled a 99, so mm. I didn't find anything. <laughs> Let's see if... I should actually roll, huh? Uh, nope. 80. <laughs> All, right. So. All right. So Cassidy over here is just digging through stuff. And with three degrees of success, because a 10 is three degrees, you find three items. So we're going to do this Ooh. roll table thing three times to find out what you found. I mean, the, the rest of us okay. didn't do so well. So I'm glad yeah. you, you, you did so great. <laughs> I'm so happy to share right, my winnings. So I, I rolled three times. So now it's back to the, the D10. And six. Six. Yeah, D10, D6. And then we're going to do that three times. All right. First one is a three on the D6 and a seven on the D10. Cool. Uh, you find edible mushrooms. Oh. Edible mushrooms. Do Yay. I know what effect they New adventure? <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are these are ED mushrooms, not the trippy mushrooms. Those are psychedelic mushrooms. That's a different thing entirely. Uh, just it, just joke. An item. it was a joke. Got but, it. Uh, these are ED <laughs> mushrooms. That's still yeah. good. All right. Yeah. Lovely. Next one, six on the D10 and one on the D6. A tool belt. A tool belt, tool belt. nice. Mm -hmm. And then five on the D6 and four on the D10. Uh, and a lamp with two quarts of oil in it. So you find a lantern, essentially. Yes. Nice. Uh, great. So I hold these, my bounty up. My arms are like full of things. And I'm like, uh, I had some more success in that partial ship. Would anyone like to um, take some of these? Yeah. Oh, look at here. Share the use of any of them or all of them. I'm going to examine the mushrooms and just come back and, and be like, oh my goodness, this is whatever species of mushroom and just like start right. jotting notes. This is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'll also especially hold out the lantern and say, I don't really have much use for this, so if anyone needs some light in the night, please feel free to take this, too. Well, I reckon we might need that when we're in a cave come in the morrow. Yeah. You all will. I'll be all right. Um, by mm -hmm. the way, does my mutation, is it visible? Yeah, you, you actually have buggy eyes. Like, you have yeah, slightly okay. bigger than average eyes. They look sure. like, okay, yeah. so yes. Maybe not full-on fish face, but, you know, <laughs> bigger than average, for sure. Okay, so they probably know what I, I'm not just being cryptic. They pro You all right. probably know what I mean by that. Well, looks like uh, we got, got plenty of food, plenty of water. We are... Uh, we are good and fixed up this evening. 
Yeah. Yes, you know. Hopefully yeah, this, this is, is a good omen for for when we get to the mine. Yeah. So as you rest for the night, uh, about halfway through the night or so, the wind picks up a little bit, and a sandstorm actually erupts around you. The sand is hot despite the fact that it's been cold outside this night, and it sort of whips around you, spooking the horses. Um, but would would Amos, who particularly is good with animals, maybe want to try to see if he can calm them down? Yes, I will. And um, I just kind of uh, mutter the horses, hold on, hold now," And he'll like actually kind of sing to him like, in the sweet by and by, oh no. And then just kind of pet him and see if that works. It, mm -hmm. it has worked before. Hopefully mm -hmm. it will work now. Mm. But the song, I will grant you advantage because that was nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, and that looks like a 45 under 55. Yeah. Totally calm them down. Keep them at peace in this sandstorm that whips around. Sand gets into places for the rest of you, making it fairly uncomfortable. And for moments, you lose track of each other, but you can hear the Amos is singing. And it keeps you all kind of calm. And so the horses remain where they are. They don't try to run off into the night. And when the sandstorm dies down, you guys get some rest. You all wake up rested and calm and with horses still. You just got to know how to, how to talk to them, sing to them, as it were. How's everybody else doing? Y'all all right? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, I still feel like I got some in my nose. Yes, uh, as fine as I can be. How far out are we from this mine here? As the sun rises uh, just enough in the morning, you can see the mine ahead of you. It's not very far now. Uh, you travel most of the distance before you decided to stop for the night at the ship. Um, and so you can see that the, the mine is not far now, maybe an hour's, you know, canter on the horses or whatever to get there. Well, it seems like it's time we get back on this trail. Uh, now, I expect y'all to have your mean faces on, walking in a dangerous spot. Uh, Davis, you might want to, you might want to let, let, uh, let Cassidy take, take the, uh, yeah, you see him just practicing that, being mean, <laughs> that mean face, cause, uh, no, I think he's getting it, he, uh, or, Amos, or, uh, or I feel sure? like I'm getting a headache. Yeah. Cassidy, please don't hurt yourself now. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> and okay. so you approach you approach the mine. Uh, and as you get closer, you can see the carts and things that were here for the mine. They've been kind of, you know, messed with. Um, not that they've been damaged, just that like there's been clearly clearly been a scuffle here. There's some, you know, scratches on them from blades that would have, you know, hit them randomly in some kind of fight, some uh bullet holes from wild shots out into the the you know, at whatever was coming at them. And you can see the definite signs that this was taken by force mm -hmm. as you approach. The cave entrance is relatively large. Um, you could walk the horses in if you wanted to, but that would bring them into the mine. You're not sure if it gets narrower as it goes, um, but it is big enough, um, certainly for carts and people and potentially horses. I just realized something. Maybe we should have left the horses behind somewhere. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Maybe we can walk them back and tie them up somewhere. Yeah, I I also think it could be a good idea to lure them out, at least a few of them. There are four in there, and they can hear us coming anyway. If we make some noise and then surround them, we might be able to take some out quicker. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how it works, but maybe. <laughs> Not sounds, a terrible idea. Yeah, sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, if we can kill them outside, that'll be great. 
And what's what you say, Hamish? You uh as I recall, you are uh, relatively light of foot. You wanna maybe take the lead on uh on uh ferreting them out? I mean, I can get in that mine and find out where things are pretty pretty easily without stirring up too much of an effort while you find a nice outs the way place to to hitch up them horses i hear you and i will take the reins of the horses and try to find some place to tie them up that is that is a little secluded sure easy enough to do and you've got decent command over the horses to be able to do so um so you you can take them off a little ways and then tie them off kind of behind like a boulder or something so they're not really visible um but they're also close enough that you can get back to them if you needed to um, while while we go with Hamish and see what Hamish does to get inside. Easy enough. I think Hamish, so, Hamish is going to take his boots off and then he's going to just try and stealth his way through and just kind of do some mm -hmm. recon. Sure. Go ahead and make that roll and I'll describe the cave as you go in and the tunnels that you find. Ooh, real bad. 96 out of 70. Uh, Six so, on uh, bikes. Ooh. Yeah. We do have that uh, that luck thing. Yeah, I got a lot of luck. Right? I'm going to I'm going to use and some it reset luck. to the beginning of the session. Yeah. So you're back. I, I was born lucky, so I'm going to yeah. I'm going to do something about and I only reroll one of them. No, you reroll. You oh, just rerolled the roll entirely. Uh, that's better. 50. OK, Phew. that will succeed. Um, fortunately, because if you failed the, again, that would be a lucky failure. So it would be, we consider that a, a same as a critical failure, right? Uh, so you succeed as you enter the tunnel, it gets dark and cold and quiet as almost immediately upon entering the walls get narrower fairly quickly and it becomes cramped. Um, there's echoing and you can, you can feel the moisture. So, you know, there's definitely water in here. It's sort of a nice you know, difference from the outside, which was hot and dry. Uh, but the tunnels are, they, they choke and they wind and bend. And then you see like man-made sort of breakaways where all of a sudden there's a, a tunnel that goes off in a straight line, for example, that, that definitely is not natural. Um, and you see a few of those, uh, but you can move around in here because you're doing it stealthily easily enough not to disturb anything. Why don't you make a perception roll for me, but you'll have disadvantage because it is both dark and sounds echo all over the place. Okay. Uh, so it's double the tens die and then take yes, the lower? The, the higher of the two because of the disadvantage. Oh, yeah, it's higher, higher. Correct. Uh, 75. Okay. Which is a failure for my perception, mm -hmm. but I am lucky. So I'm just going to uh, do it again. Okay why that's why i'm so lucky um ooh, uh the highest is 69 under just 70 just barely just ooh. barely enough nice but that's a success so at first you were having trouble distinguishing where like these noises were coming from because they're echoing all over the place sometimes it felt like it was in front of you sometimes behind you but then you know, you just take a moment to listen. You can start distinguishing where they're coming from. You can hear down one of the tunnels the, the, the sounds of horses. They're definitely down this tunnel and in the back somewhere. But up ahead of you and around a bend, you can tell that there are people and they're talking. Um, but there's a couple of things happening. There's a language that you don't understand and then a language that you do. And it has a very distinct British accent. Yeah, Hamish you can't just, quite make out the words because it's all yeah. modeled. Yeah, Hamish just kind of whispers, gotcha, and then like makes his way back. <laughs> yeah, you can remember the path that you took to find all of that because I'm not going to... I know my way around the mine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but yeah, remember we talked about that before. An intelligence role would be to remember things. But in this case, I'm not going to make you do that. You know, you sort of got time to walk around and figure things out. So you come back out of the lead about the same time that Amos comes back from tying up the horses while Davis and Cassidy have been waiting probably behind a cart or something out of way, out of sight. Mm -hmm. Well, I uh, definitely know where they are currently at. And they do have horses in there. So oh. <laughs> might be able to 
sell those back to the town or uh, eat them. I don't know, whatever we feel like. I would, uh, I would opt to sell them if it comes to that. But, uh, so, how many? Uh, so you get a get a good look at how many was our friend telling the truth? Uh, I didn't hear. I didn't s- exactly see them because I did. If I got too much closer, they did see me. But uh, I did hear uh, a, a few people, and and one of them was definitely British. Hmm. He's talking all fancy about stuff, as they are apt to do. That is correct. Hmm. All right. So the next hard part is how do we get them out? Some type of diversion. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. This is going to sound weird, but uh, I have an idea. <laughs> and tell me if this doesn't work. I would like to, I have a ground, like ground coffee. I, I imagine it's in like a tin can or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to use some of my tools to like hang it up. And then, like, okay. shoot at it with an arrow from far away. So then, like, that sound of like stuff falling out echoes all the way down the cave. Hopefully, they come and check what what's that is. It could be water. Who knows? It could be something. <laughs> Maybe okay. they don't care. But that's an idea. If anyone else mm-hmm. has some really cool ideas, that's just what I have. I don't have much. <laughs> well, I mean, I could try and put something together. Oh, right. I forgot there's crafting. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if you've got, like, uh, like, Hamish, if you've actually got the, like, a notion to craft something, I can help with that. Um, like, pretty much any, like, I've got uh, the extra hand um, ability, and that will add, like, uh, uh, plus 10 de- uh, per degree of ses- uh, success when doing teamwork. Oh, mm-hmm, that would mm-hmm. be useful because I have crafting tools, but I'm not skilled in it, so it would be at disadvantage. <laughs> I am actually, I am actually proficient in crafting. So yeah, maybe you should make something then. <laughs> but let's let's say that like like Ham like actually, and you can say as Hamish what the idea is, and I I can Hamish would basically be like, I think I can I think I can fix up something. Actually. Actually, it wouldn't be a disadvantage. It would be flat because I get advantage and yeah. disadvantage. <laughs> yes, because the tools would offset your disadvantage. That's why you have them. But I have tools, so that would give me an advantage. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And when it comes to teamwork, you basically determine who's going to be the primary, as you guys have kind of discussed here. And then the secondary person would still roll. Now, the upside to a, uh, and then we would go from there, but the upside to a teamwork roll is that the other person's proficiency doesn't matter anymore. So it's really just a straight roll against the instinct in the case of crafting and find out if you succeeded or not. And then each degree of success will add plus five to that person's threshold before they make the roll. In in Hamish or in Amos's case, he adds a plus ten per degree of success. So he's actually much better at helping people than most people are at helping each other. Um that's what his extra hand does. Um so if are is it just the two of you that are gonna craft something? Or will, do the others want to try to help as well? Well, like, well, Hamish, uh, do you have an actual idea of what it is you'd be yeah. crafting? But well, like, you'd want you were well, you were thinking. I mean, noise is good, but you know what always gets people out of a mind? Fire. That's true. <laughs> that is that is a fact. So yeah. I imagine we we set a some things on fire, get some smoke blown in there. They'll have to come investigate and we had uh back when i was on a, a ranch not too long ago we uh, we had rigged up a spark thrower uh, keep coyotes and uh other undesirables away i think i can do something along those lines mm. spark thrower sounds interesting let's yeah. see hmm so how many component pieces do we think would go into a spark thrower, you think? Uh, let's see. So I would wager it would probably be at least like flint and steel. So that's mm-hmm. like, I don't know how many how much that would count for. Um, and then like 
some sort of propellant and uh, like propellant of some kind like sagebrush mm -hmm. something and then like mm -hmm. an actual container to mm -hmm. like serve as like the pot mm -hmm. okay so we'll say maybe five component pieces in our abstract system of governing how things are crafted um normally those come from your inventory i think you guys have a grand total of a few right now maybe two ish um but Fortunately for you, there's a whole bunch of random abandoned items all over the place that you can use uh, for this story purposes as, as component pieces. Um, plus, you included sagebrush, so I'll go ahead and allow you to grab some of that as well as count that. So we're not going to worry so much about the component pieces as long as you can get to a total of five on your roll. Um, and so we will do that. And that's not five degrees of success. There's a we'll we'll get to that in a second. But so, um, is it so? Hamish is helping Amos. Is that right? Looks like okay. it. Because for the pri like, I'd be the primary since I get advantage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. due to tools and and being okay. proficient. Okay. So then, Hamish, make your your crafting roll. Not worrying about your proficiency because it doesn't matter in your case. Forty four out of seventy. So that's a success. Uh, so that'll add a plus five to your threshold there, Amos, um, which would then put you, I think, at 50 for crafting. And then you'd have advantage mm -hmm. because of your tools. OK. Uh, 12. OK. So 12 is three degrees of success. So now what we would do for making something new, you're going to you would roll d4s. And we're just tracking to see how many component pieces you put into the thing. So we know we need to put five in. So just get more than five on um, these D4s. So three D4s is what you're going to Three D4s. Okay. Mm -hmm. So three. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four from thin air, essentially. Um, and that is how the, the crafting system would work um, whenever you're making anything. It's just really a matter of time, how fast do you put it together, if it takes multiple attempts to put it together, or if it's just one shot. And so in your case, probably about 30 minutes or so of like putting these random pieces of stuff, some from maybe your inventory, the two that, that somebody has, um, and then like the sagebrush and all the other things, you can make this spark shooter thing, spark thrower. And so you hold in your hand, Amos, this thing that, that will shoot sparks. And it's like a like you this strange amalgamation of a bucket with like there's a hole in like a fixed like flint and steel in there, and there's like a uh let's say I found like a spare like uh spur like some spurs, and so like use the like spinning action of the spur to like complete like continually like flick the uh flick the the flint and steel. And it like keeps like shooting like shooting sparks at shooting sparks at the repellent, which causes a big fire, and it keeps like kind of rotating it, doing it uh, over and over. Nice, very cool item. Cool. And where do you want to put it? Welp, I would I would guess at the mouth of the cave would probably be the best place, unless y'all y'all think differently. Makes sense to me. Uh, yeah, maybe some a little bit uh, uh, outside the mouth, as in making them, drawing them fully out of the cave. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe 10, 20 feet. Sounds good to me. Okay. So that's, that's a good plan that you have here to draw these people out. So right. we, we got to. Just shoot them as soon as they come out, or is, it, is it we looking to talk at them? Well, we do need to know where they're keeping these prisoners. Also, it is intriguing that one of them turned into a British person, presumably. But, um, yeah, I mean, that ain't no big deal. I knew a guy, Frank, got kicked in the head by a mule and started talking all funny. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, probably not the same, but. Mm. I, I will write it. I, you see him take his note and pretend to write down that that's what happened. <laughs> and 
to be frank with you, intriguing ain't the first thing I think of when a random British person shows up around a bunch of not white folks. <laughs> no offense, Hamish. All right. So I don't know that I am capable of being offended by that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why uh, I like you. That's why I like you. <laughs> so we're we're setting this trap up. Uh, I, I, I guess I would be somewhere where I can uh, try to shoot them with arrows, but I'm probably not the most deadly at that. So I can also uh, use my gun to shoot mm -hmm. them. I think my mm -hmm. only my only concern is. Do we want to get a hold of the leader? I'm, I'm worried about them potentially mm -hmm. making a, a break for it if we make like yeah. if if like it's super clear that like dudes are getting killed outside. Well, I mean, there's, there, there's a few of them. It's not like a, a massive number. And then the other thing I think is the horses are inside. So if they're mm -hmm. like running out to check if there's a fire there, I, at first, I don't know if they would go grab horses, but maybe they just, that's just, actually, this is a question for our minor friend. Is that what, <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that first they'd send a few folk just to make sure everything's all right. And then it, if it if it were real bad, they might just hop on the horses and try and get out, assuming that there ain't no back way. But as far as we're, we're aware, it's the only way in and out. Mm -hmm. All right. So why don't... So So it sounds like maybe the whole group won't come up here. We subdue them, rush in, there's less people, and we can talk to the leader slash whatever goes on after. How's that? If if that's how it works. And if not, we go with plan B. All right, Which, then. Which will probably involve a whole lot more killing than we intended. But we've agreed that we don't want to kill this leader. Is that right? He's not avoid... initially. Right. We want to be able to talk to them for a bit before before whatever happens. Okay. Don't oh, worry. Do... If, I, if I shoot them, I'll aim for the gut or somewhere. They'll just hurt a whole lot. And we'll eventually kill them. Yeah, but yeah. not right away. Do we know what... Hamish is neighborly like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we know what the white demon looks like? This is Aliza now trying to remember if we've mm -hmm. gotten a description. In not, not exactly. Um, there hasn't really been a description of it aside from the words. Um, you know nothing else about mm -hmm. it aside from it. it. It is monstrous, though. The rumors that you heard before um, okay. is that it's a, a large, monstrous creature. Okay. It's going to be strange for me to not shoot to kill on a monstrous creature. But I can uh, I can hold back that impulse, if you all can. Well, don't uh, don't uh, put your uh, put your survival ahead of it, but maybe make an effort. I mean, I'm the picture of civility. Mm. <laughs> You so you say. <laughs> All right. Let's light this cave on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely won't backfire in any way. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so you set up your spark shooter where you intended to shoot it uh, to fling these sparks out and throw them into the cave to create flamey dust stuff right basically you're trying to create the smoke screen of burning um and obviously smoke and noise to alert everyone inside that is easy enough to do and so you uh amos how do you what do you do when you set it down and how do you like get it going do you run back to where everyone else is What's your plan? Yeah, like there's going to be a cord connected to like the spur that's like okay. uh, sticking out of like a hole in the a and adjacent another hole in the side of the bucket, and I'll uh -huh. like pull it and run right. back toward everyone else. In it starts a spinning mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. precisely. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, one more thing. I think uh, I think Davis also mentioned we should have them surrounded when they run out. So I'll I'll be yeah, gonna yeah, spread be on, out. Mm -hmm, yeah, I'll be on one side of the cave entrance, maybe to the okay. on the left side. All right, seems seems like a smart move. Is there? Uh, it's it's okay if there's nowhere to hide, but uh, is there like some like something to hide behind, kind of in front of, yep. like yeah, you know, between the yeah. Because I think I'll, the, I'll take the card the front. that basically everyone else has been hiding behind. You can stay yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, it's about it's what we consider mid range from the entrance to the cave. Yeah, because um, I, I don't imagine there are going to be a ton of people coming, and I imagine if I need to, I can kill them before they kill me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'd also like to be maybe mid range or just inside mid range. Mm -hmm. Do I get disadvantage if I'm too close? No, uh, with a peacemaker, you actually get more advantage the closer to the target you are Ew. so well, with range <laughs> with ranges of the weapons which we didn't really cover before there's there are some like distances where they're effective and distances where they're ineffective the mm -hmm. bow is actually much harder to use when you're at like close range to something as, as opposed to mid-range but the, the the peacemakers the handguns are actually better the closer you are to the target because you have more force behind the bullet that's coming mm -hmm. out so when you're standing right up next to somebody and you're like shooting them right in the face, for example, it's going to be more effective than if you're really far away trying to shoot at them. Um, so in your case, the closer you are to the entrance, the better off you're going to do when you hit them. How close can I get while still being concealed? You Well, so the concealment's actually a stealth roll. So that's actually, you know, mm -hmm. the distance isn't really a factor in this particular case. Okay. Yeah, because oh. the mouth of the, the cave is fairly large, like I mentioned before. So you could be, say, short range, which is one movement to your target, and then we'd make a stealth roll to see if you're, like, ducking behind some stuff to, to be hidden when they come out. Okay. Then I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll aim for short range when okay. the time comes. Okay. That will grant you advantage on your attack rolls. So that's something to note. Well, I might actually, yeah, I might actually then instead, because I'm pretty good at stealth, I mm -hmm. might actually try and uh, be be inside the cave a little bit and okay. hidden, so that they so that I'm behind them when they sure. come out. Yeah, Recall. come out, yeah. pop out behind them, and do stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. That how seems well. like a good plan. How well I could do this? Uh, no, gonna gonna luck point that. <laughs> <laughs> good thing you're Mister Lucky. Yeah, forty eight out of fifty. Okay, so you're hidden. You're hidden. We'll see if they can see you. They'll probably be distracted by the flame. Yeah, I imagine uh, there'll be a little bit of smoke and stuff like that. Yeah. And there's like yeah, yeah. detritus and like mining carts and stuff in the mm -hmm. near the front. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Where's uh Where's Davis going to be? I'm going to be anywhere that I think. I like. I'm not very good at this hiding shooty thing. Sure. But, uh, I am going to probably be, I guess, if he's inside, I'll be behind the cart. That's probably yeah. the easiest place. That'll be mid-range, which is effective distance for a bow. Um, you actually have a, you'll have advantage on your attack at mid-range with a bow. Okay. Um, and then it gets disadvantage as you get closer. Um, but that'll be perfect for you to be behind. Okay. And what about Amos? Um, I will be, I'm not, I'm not good at hiding at all. Because mm -hmm. I am a large man, and mm -hmm. um, but I'm not gonna really count on hiding. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd actually screw it. I'm gonna be. I will. I will try and find some place to sort of hide behind. But I'm actually mm -hmm. gonna be like, uh, in proximity to the like in like believable proximity to the spark thrower to like just appear as though I'm a like a random like uh random like uh random traveler that a camp tra like a like a like camp uh a trail fire got out of hand mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like if if i manage to hide great if not like oh i'm just a rando who like let some like matches get get out of hand and sure. it's dry out here okay so you're going to be off to the side of the cave entrance, or are you going to be trying to get back to the cart or something? Uh, off to the side of the cave entrance. So opposite of Cassidy, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will accept all of that. So those of you that want to be hidden, 
uh, you can make a stealth roll. Well, we I, Hamish already did, so um, that would be, I guess, for Cassidy and then potentially Davis if Davis is trying to hide behind the cart. Yeah, I'll try. All right, <laughs> here we go. Uh, is that stealth agility? Is under agility, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I see that you are uh, not proficient there, Davis. No, and I, yeah. I I was already going to use a luck, but I should roll again and see. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, Ooh. I'm going to use a luck point and see okay. if we can. And uh, is that that is also still at a disadvantage, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. the reroll is also still a disadvantage. Okay. Much better, much better. That is a forty-two. Yeah. Nice. Made it. Right. Bam behind the cart. <laughs> you saw you see him like start peeking up like as he's like are we in place and then uh he looks over at cassidy he's like oh, no not yet <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah meanwhile cassidy is making her over to the uh, her way over to the other side the left side of the mm-hmm. cave entrance she yeah. got her best was 11. nice <laughs> yes thank nice. you uh proficiency because the other role was 71. so okay <laughs> yeah uh, yeah all right, so you eleven. That's three degrees of us. That is that is better than Hamish is doing inside the the opening of the cave. So you just kind of, uh, as Davis is looking for you, right, and then he, he pops his head up like you said. Um, you catch a glimpse of him, but he looks around and he doesn't know where you went. You just kind of went behind something, and you're gone now. Uh, and it's just, <laughs> just yeah, some eyes looking through like some hole in the board of something, right? Like that's exactly what it is. Um, you are you are doing a good job of not being seen. And so Amos does the ripcord to light this thing on fire. And then Amos, are you going to try to hide when you ran? And actually, no. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to serve as like the um, like kind of bait. Okay. <laughs> Extremely large, large, and slightly intimidating bait. Yeah, and you can pull the ripcord with and your fists yeah. too if, if things get a little hairy for you. Yeah, just pull the ripcord and then. Like sort of ha- like half-heartedly try to hide, but also looking like, you know, I, I'm more waiting than than hiding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems good. So this thing starts spinning, kicking out these sparks all over the place, and you hear a commotion from inside the cave, some shouting in that language that you've now heard a bunch of times, um, and then, and then an, an English voice shouting for everyone to find out what's going on. And a couple of guys, three guys, uh, come running down the tunnel. They are dressed in those same kinds of like armor robe things, these wraps of leather around their body that you've seen before. And they are uh, wearing the masks, but they're not really on their faces where they've fallen down in the run. So they're down around their necks or up on top of their head. They're not put covering their face with these wooden demon masks, as it were. Um, and they rush toward the front of the tunnel. Uh, to see what is going on. And there's fire and smoke. And they do a very bad job of seeing Hamish as they run past him with a 95. <laughs> um, so they rush right past Hamish and come out to try to figure out what's going on. As they approach this spark box thing, this bucket on the ground, they slow down and start looking around because it is not a fire. It's some kind of device that's launching fire. And so I turn to all of you and say, they're right where you want them. What do you want to do? I think Hamish just comes out from behind him and cocks his gun. Okay. Um, Cassidy's staying hidden, but I think mm-hmm. Cassidy's going to... Um, I, I don't want to preempt what Hamish is going to do. So Cassidy's just going to get one of them in her sights and just okay. wait for the okay. whoever makes the first move all right so that would be taking aim and so you'll get advantage on your next attack but you already have advantage for the distance so you'll have double advantage which we explained recently okay awesome. yeah and then what about davis and same same davis? uh just getting ready to shoot that arrow so all right taking okay. aim. double and advantage for, for you for aim is some of the oh, oh, oh hey now hey now i ain't uh I'm completely just taking, like, taking, uh, taking attention off of you three. It's like, hey, uh, I uh, set up camp around here earlier. I'm uh, looking for some water and got a little lost. 
Y'all wouldn't happen. Y'all wouldn't happen to know uh, no uh, no Luther, would you? Not Luther. <laughs> Let's see what they think about this. What they think I'm for? Oh, 47. All right. I think that that is a success on their resolve rolls, so they aren't startled by the fact that you suddenly start speaking to them. But they don't really understand what you're saying at first, and then they start talking in their broken English to each other, trying to confirm that you said Luther. And then one turns to you and says, No Luther, go away. Nah, that ain't particularly neighborly of you. I'm just asking if you know Luther. You know, little Luther from, from, from the high five. Real terrible at real terrible at Pharaoh, craps, all that. Love to gamble, love to gamble. And I like very, very like, you know, like I'm creeping closer, but not mm -hmm. in a like obviously th like threatening, but not threatening in that like I'm actively <laughs> being threatening, threatening in the fact that I'm large. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, yeah, little Luther from back on the high five. Plays a lot of Pharaoh, plays a lot of craps. He don't know, just terrible at it. Terrible. But he loved to play craps, loved to play Pharaoh. And uh, he told me, he told me, good game around him. So I figured, I I figured, still walking forward. Um, <laughs> I, I figured, I come out here, I uh, I put a little camp up. And once I found where found where other folks were, that bit where, that where the game would be. And since I done found the folks walking closer, I done found the folks. It looks like I found the game because y'all, uh, y'all between three, you look like uh, look like you might have uh, have a little uh, uh, bringsmanship to you, a little little uh, sportsmanship to you. And what I was thinking was, and as you're it, getting closer, Hamish, like he like very loudly pulls the hammer back on his gun, and and from behind them, and it's like. It, yeah, we figure he's in there somewhere, so uh, we'll just go check it in on, on ourselves. And then and, with that, yeah. I, I <laughs> pop up from behind the thing with my little arrow pointed at them. <laughs> now, the three of them stand there. The one that's in the back-ish, the farthest one back, they're all kind of in the same level. But the one farthest to the back cocks his head toward, like, backwards to look at uh, Hamish behind them with the gun. The other two look at the the slowly approaching Amos that is now almost within fighting range, as it were, and then the arrow pointed at them from Davis, and they three stand there, just confused and poised for a second. And you can see that their hands are twitchy, like they might go for these blades, these twisted sort of curved blades that they have at their hips mm -hmm. as they're trying to assess what to do next. I think I, as a Hamish notes the twist, he pulls uh, the cult knife out of his at, from from behind. He's like, "That's probably not the best idea. Your friends didn't c turn out so well." And he like flicks it at the ground. Uh, he threw it on the ground. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> uh, so Davis, Davis, and Cassidy, when. Uh, Hamish pulls this blade out and throws it on the ground. Both of you feel something about it. Something dark about this blade. Oh, hmm. Hmm. Ah. And as as it hits the ground into the sand, all three men move quickly, drawing their blades and moving forward. One is trying to close the distance to Davis. One is trying to close the distance to Amos, and one is trying to turn around uh, to go at Hamish, but he's only going to be able to turn around. Before I say to you all, since you are poised and ready, this combat round starts with you surprising them, because this is ambush, essentially. Mm -hmm. And so you will all take your turns, and then we will minus five from everyone's initiative and see who gets to go next. Okay. Okay. So, in typical order, it would go Hamish first, he being the fastest of your group. Hamish, what do you want to do as this person turns, drawing his blade, and is facing you now? I'm gonna put a bullet in his gut. Okay. Uh, uh, do you wanna do you wanna do any kind of aiming or call shots or anything, or just wanna shoot and then see what else you can do? Um, you get to do two two complex actions on your turn if you remember. Yeah, and would that be two shots? 
as well. Uh, no, you, without yeah. the without the rapid fire, yeah. sort of the multi attack ability, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, so I guess I will aim and then. Okay. I got a second to to make sure because mm -hmm. I promised mm -hmm. I wouldn't just straight kill anybody. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna say that you're actually also you're probably in close range to them, yeah. not short range, and so you will have advantage on your roll anyway. Uh, so taking aim will give you double advantage, and then we'll go from there. So that would put you at uh, 80 that you have to roll under to succeed. Um, that would my best one would be zero zero five, so five out of 80. Oh, okay. So I'm not even going to roll the the dodge for this person because I have to roll a zero zero one to succeed, um, because the tie would go to you. So therefore, you will hit him. Uh, for your damage, but because you are so close, you're actually going to do 2d6 plus 3 rather than 1d6 plus 3 because of your proximity. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. All right. Uh, sort of mule kick him in the stomach with a bullet, as it were. <laughs> he reacts uh, by sort of oof, air, wind knocked out of him a bit. And that is the thing that happens aiming and shooting now we go to davis yeah there's one running at you uh before before he so he's been aiming and he's like mm -hmm. stood up and then that knife gets dropped down and he goes and then he like shakes his head focuses realizes he's got to do act now i so i i was aiming at the guy mm -hmm. can i shoot at his leg and then t that would take away one of my advantages or like... yeah yeah so the call shot to his leg would take away one of your advantages so you'd still have advantage okay and right. then you would so you'd still roll with that okay all right that's gonna be a 36 okay under my and 40 so... thank goodness <laughs> right that's a success all right so you will hit him in the knee let's see if he can uh i'm Oh, he's surprised. Right, you guys ambushed them, so he doesn't get to dodge right now. He will the next action or the second action phase, but not right now. So you will have hit him in the knee. So go ahead and roll your two d four. Yeah. And then I will also consider him, uh, you know, kneecapped essentially by your arrow. Yes. I was a soldier until I took an arrow to the knee. Mm -hmm. uh, five. Five well, damage, yeah. and he is slowed because he just got an arrow to the knee. Yeah. All right. Uh, now that's only one th uh, thing. So you want to do something else? Uh, more complex action you can do. Huh? No. I mean, I, I will. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think there's like I don't want to get closer. I'm in like optimal sure. range. So you yeah. are in optimal range. You can uh, you can set yourself up like take aim for the next time. So draw. Oh sure. Yeah. And take aim. Yeah. I'm gonna do that the next time. Yeah. <laughs> sort of offsetting it by Got you it. know a turn, but that's fine. Uh, so. After Davis comes Cassidy, who is hidden, and therefore they will not be able to do anything based on what you do because they don't even know you're there. <laughs> so, um, it sounds like two of them have been hit. Yes. Are they both down? Those two? They are not. They've just. This has been too fast. One got hit in the stomach, and the other one took an an, an arrow to the knee. It's probably oh. off kilter, but he hasn't gone down yet. Got it. All right, so the third unhit one is who I'd mm -hmm. like. Oh wait, who was I? He's running. Actually... He's running directly toward Amos. Oh yeah, his let's... back is to you at this point. Yeah, let's let's stop that. Stop that right now. <laughs> um... You have double advantage. That was the thing to note. You have double advantage from your aiming. You okay. can do like uh, Davis just did, and you can do like a called shot if you want to. That would still you'd still have advantage, but you have side effects if you succeed in what you're trying to do um that's an option i'm not saying you have to do it but you could be doing like a call shot to a vital organ to try to kill them faster um mm -hmm. or a leg or something it's it's just options those are just i'm just throwing it out there mm -hmm. um yeah. is double advantage so the d10 and then mm -hmm. three no so you'd um... roll you would just roll with advantage so you'd have that extra d10 but then you would add plus five to your threshold so you'd be rolling under 90 oh. in your case with a oh, double. oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Um, hmm. Now, I think I will keep the double advantage, though. Okay. okay. So I'll just see where it hits him. Yeah. And the best of those two was 43. 43. That is two degrees of success. 
Um, he is not dodging, so we won't compare his dodge to that, which is what we do here. So you succeed in doing 1d6 plus 3 damage to him. All right. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4. Okay. I will write that down. 4 damage. Um, but I'm going to give you a little bit extra because you hit him in the back and he didn't know you were coming and stuff. So I'm going to I'm going to bump it up to to give you another two. So I'll put it at six. Um, and then you have the unique opportunity to do uh, another thing if you want to, but you can also attack again because you are trigger happy. I'm totally gonna attack again. <laughs> <laughs> um, this time you won't have double advantage. You'll still have advantage for the proximity, but you won't have that second advantage. Okay, I will. I would like to shoot the one that. <laughs> this is awful. Uh, the one that already got shot in the gut. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the one that's turned around toward Hamish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just in case he tries mm -hmm. to lunge or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have advantage. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Ooh, I see a ten on one of these. Oh yeah, sixteen. Ooh, Ooh, okay. Okay. Nice. All right. So go ahead and roll your 1d6 plus 3 damage that you do here. Five on the die. Nice. So, eight. Uh, so second shot rings out, passes through like his mid chest going in a sort of perpendicular direction to his first shot through the gut. Um, and he starts to like, like it's being pushed. Now he's being pushed in two different directions at the same time from these bullets that are passing through him. <laughs> Uh, I don't think this is going to end well for him as he goes like flipping through the air. Um, but we're going to go to uh, Amos. Find out what uh, you so want to do. The fella that was running toward me, I see mm -hmm. him kind of jerk forward because he mm -hmm. got shot in the back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to allow uh, momentum to be my friend. I want to grab him and shove him down onto the uh, spark thrower. Okay. Right on so the that'll, spark thrower. That'll kill the noise. At, at least the noise <laughs> of the spark thrower. I don't know about him. But... Uh, all right. So that would just be a brawl roll. Um, but I will grant you advantage for the fact that he's already falling forward. Okay. Let's see. So. Uh, let's see. 28 under 40. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, I'll see if he can move out of the way of that. He, but he has disadvantage because he just got shot and stuff. Oh, yeah, no, that is, that is 80. That is not going to do anything for him. Uh, so he will get caught by your grab and get thrown into the spark shooter. How much damage do you think a spark shooter does? Um, well, let's see. So, so along with like the just concussive force of being grabbed and like, slammed into the mm -hmm. ground so whatever that does i would imagine that like um a rapidly expanding fire like i would say like a, akin to like what would you say like getting thrown into a campfire would do mm, it's a good question mm -hmm. so normally fire does like 1d6 damage which is what we consider like heavy damage like 1d6 plus three Mm -hmm. um, you already did. You already do average damage. So you already do that by your fist, and that's what I was going to roll off of for the throwing them to the ground. Um, but if we were to add those two together, that would basically put it up to like extreme damage. So one d eight plus seven is what I'm thinking. I won't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Based on the scale of damage that we use, right? Two to the base, and then another three. So we're putting it at five. So yeah, two, one d eight plus seven. We'll call it that. Okay. Uh, that's fifteen. Because I just rolled an eight. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, so with the six that he already took, uh, this guy falls into this flame, and the fire just, for whatever reason, kind of just hits him, starts burning him, kind of pushes through. And all you all, you all see is just sort of sparks flying all over the place. But for Amos, who's standing right next to this guy, you can smell his burned flesh. You can hear his scream. And then it silences. And that is where it's at when we ask you what else you want to do. Uh, let's see. What else can I do? You can um, you can move. There's definitely guys that are now, uh, you know, a distance, one move distance away from you. 
and then there's other places to go, like the entrance into the cave. Um, okay. You could draw a weapon or something if you wanted to. You have that repeating rifle still. I think I'm actually going to close in on uh, the... Let's see. Um, is this the one that got slowed from the arrow? Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah. I'm going to just close in on that that guy. Okay. Yeah. That would be one movement distance because you were kind of right there. So there. Yeah. That would be what you can do. And so in this this first action phase, a lot of stuff happened. And we go to the second action phase. One guy is now starting to lift off the ground as he's being pushed in two different directions. Minus five from everyone's initiative. He's going to try to keep his balance um, because he will actually get to take actions now. Uh, 26. He does keep his balance. He actually manages to stand his ground. He gets knocked around, um, but he, he manages to keep himself up. And he can only do one thing. He's going to lash slash wildly with his curved blade at Hamish and see if he can hit him. A 46, which is a success. Just one degree. So Hamish, you can try to parry or dodge. Um, I'm going to try and thing. dodge. Yeah. Because uh, cause I have a 60 to dodge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 27. Okay. It's not that the first time degrees. someone's trying to stab me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two degrees of success compared to his one degree of success. You absolutely move out of the way of that blade as it slashes wildly in the air. A duck type of move. Uh, the other one that got shot in the knee, he will try to keep his balance and absolutely fails. Uh, so he will face plant into the dirt as he as he goes and he starts to try to get up and that's what his turn is going to be. Oh, and buddy. Go... <laughs> yeah, as, <laughs> as Amos is barreling down on top of him. Um, and so I go to now Hamish. You've just dodged this attack. What do you want to do? Uh, Hamish says... Uh, we only need one of you to talk, uh, so he's gonna just shoot this guy. <laughs> okay, uh, 48. With advantage. Yeah. Oh, with advantage. Yeah, uh, let's roll another one of these, see if I get better. Yeah, 48 out of 75. All right, um, he's gonna try to dodge. Uh, he gets a 43, which is one degree. You had one degree, right? Uh, yes, so that ties and therefore goes to you. So you shoot him for one D or 2d6 plus three because you're so close. Um, yeah, uh, plus three, that's, uh, 15. This guy takes your shot and tell me what happens as he loses his life. I think like you watch him take that swing at, uh, at Hamish and Hamish like is like almost like a, a dancer. So, so graceful. He gets out of the way and just like pulls his gun like at nearly like just immediate range pulls his gun up like just center mass right in the heart fires a shot and the guy just falls over yeah just falls backwards from this shot it's already off balance anyway all right davis all right the guy you shot on the knee is laying in the ground yeah amos is rushing toward him yeah uh yeah. i don't want to coup de gras that guy <laughs> <laughs> be really not not davis uh not yet <laughs> uh but i want to can i do an in like a recall like mm, sure. thing to try to remember what the guy uh the bandit friend did said in his language when he surrendered like i want to try to approximate oh. what he said to be like surrender Got in, his, in his own tongue like try to yeah do that. yeah that would be an intelligence role yeah, that's uh, what I thought. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, I was like, and you've read some of the language, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll allow you to make it turn the the phrase into a command, as it were. Cool. All right. That is a seventy-one under seventy-five. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> just enough. Much like when you listened to the American, the dingo. Uh, speak some Chinese. Your oh, version of it is real bad. <laughs> but it's good enough that you are sure that you've given him the, the proper command. All right. That's my Let's turn. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he might not live till then, but I, I, I wanted to give him a chance. <laughs> All right. So then we'll go to Cassidy. There is uh, one guy laying in the dirt, one guy not moving as he lays on a bucket of flame. 
and uh, one guy who is clearly dead. Okay. Um, I think, mm, you know what? I think Cassidy is actually going to move first. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to move from my hiding place and go to the entrance of the cave and just listen to hear okay. if if they have maybe if they're coming or if they notice if they heard the commotion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so would that be like a perception that or? would be a reception role yeah okay. perception remind me please it's underneath the instinct i see it now yeah okay so instinct uh proficient yes i am okay Oh my goodness. I've rolled so many tens in this game. My luck's going to run out eventually, but not yet. 17. <laughs> 17. Uh, yeah, in all of the commotion and chaos outside of the cave, there's lots of noise and echoes, but you can listen through it, and what you can hear is somebody and a horse, and they're headed toward the entrance of the cave. Ooh, uh, yeah, I'd like to reposition myself to hide again. Okay, we'll have to do that on your next turn. Okay, um, yeah. but before before my turn ends, I'd like to, over my shoulder, um, in a medium tone, so that I'm uh, like not too loud and it doesn't echo into the cave, I'm going to say, yeah. incoming. And then I'll, yeah, step back and wait for the moment I can to hide again. Uh also note that now that you've stepped in the entrance of the cave, at your feet is a knife. Ooh, that's can, thrown can in I, the dirt. Can I pick it up? Oh wait, that's the like evil. <laughs> Ooh, I shouldn't. No. Okay, I'm gonna play this out as my character. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cassidy instinctually bends down to pick it up, and then, no, no, I can't. I can't. She will like temptingly pull herself away from it. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right then. So now Amos, you it's your turn. Okay. Um so I heard Cassidy say incoming. Mm -hmm. Got this fella. I'm gonna try and grapple him if if I can. Sure. You uh so that would be a brawl roll again. Um you actually have advantage on it though because he's what we consider prone. So mm -hmm. any sort of fighting skill attacks on him would be advantage. So you can have advantage on that, trying to grapple with him. Okay. Uh, That was terrible. I'm going to spend some luck. Okay. So, because that was not good. <laughs> Even with the advantage, huh? Yeah, it was, it was real bad. Okay. Like, I think my right. lowest was 70-something. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. So let me just note that I'm spending uh, one of my four luck, is it? Uh, yes, I think so. Yes, four luck. Yeah, apparently I'm not supposed to grapple this dude. Um, 94. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, that was actually a critical failure then if you failed on a luck roll. So now Ouch. we're going we'll okay. see what happens since we're in combat. Fine. A critical failure. Uh, do you want to roll a D10 or do you want me to roll a D10? I will roll the D10. All right. This will be my fault. Nine. Nine. Uh, so you dislocate your wrist in the process of trying to grapple with him. Huh. <laughs> disadvantage to your attacks for the next... Uh... Oh, only two rounds. Only two rounds. You're fine. But... Ah! And like, let's assume that he's like squirming around and like mm -hmm. trying to get free, and mm -hmm. and and does. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Monising five from everyone's initiative, the guy on the ground will try to scramble away, but he's slowed, so he will take his entire turn to try to scramble away. He is uh, slowly crawling away from you. Amos. Uh, uh, actually, uh, come to think of it, would slowed have affected uh, affected my ability to to roll at all? If, no, like, no, my... it would only affect his ability to move. So he he has to spend two complex actions to move any distance. At this Got point. it. Yeah. 
So he's uh, moving away from you, um, but very slowly, crawling on the ground. Um, he will not be able to turn over. He'll have to do that next time. Um, but he's the only one left. And so I'm going to go to Hamish and then Davis. And then that would be everyone's turns for the rest for this combat round. Uh, he, so I heard that there's incoming. I can probably mm -hmm. hear a horse. Um, mm -hmm. now that you're aware of the fact that there's incoming. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I got, I got some rope. I'm thinking about how possible could I just like quickly like tie a line across the, uh, the, the mouth of the cave. Yeah. That will be a crafting roll and will take your entire turn but you if you succeed you will have successfully tied this across okay i will attempt that i have advantage but also not trained so this is a straight roll and i'm trying to get crafting is instinct which luckily i am pretty good at 14 out of 70 yeah you absolutely nice. put this up uh Damn. with f 14 that's uh that's gonna be what two three degrees of success right yeah all right so all right that's pretty pretty decently done, and this guy is gonna have to roll a critical success to not to see it before running into it. So good job. All right, Davis. Yeah, um, I gave him a chance, away, but he's not attacking, and he, and he didn't do it. I'm gonna shoot at his other leg. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's not gonna go give. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna hit him in the back. Okay. It's a bigger yeah. target. Just come, right. just just aim at a start. Yeah. 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 Just aim. Just hit him. So he is uh he is prone and a range right. attack against a prone target is at disadvantage, Makes but sense. you have advantage, so it'll just be a normal roll. Okay. All right. Uh I'm I don't think that does it. I'm gonna spend a luck roll point. Okay. Much better. 36. Okay. Uh, he will try to roll out of the way, all injured and the like. A 79. Yeah, okay. So he's going to take that arrow. Uh, and so you will do 2d4 damage to him. Okay. Ooh! That's an 8. Okay. Nasty. He is not dead, but he is not looking very good at all. Not yeah. looking very good at all. I told him to surrender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. as this arrow goes through his back and so i end this this combat round and we'll start the second combat round which is when our new uh challenger enters the scene as it were and so this person comes riding out on a horse i'm going to see if he rolls a one he rolls a 67 uh so he rides out you hear the horse just before it gets to the entrance of the cave and as the horse passes the entrance of the cave, he sees the rope just in time to get clipped by it. The horse continues running and just runs off in the direction of Amos and Davis. Um, but he gets knocked off the horse and goes falling heavily into the dirt at the entrance of the cave. Um, that would be his turn. So there's uh, the guy on the ground doesn't do anything more. He just kind of lays there to bleed. Uh, holding his chest, and now I go, Hamish, a dude just fell off a horse and is laying at your feet. Okay. Um, He's dressed like the others. He doesn't look any different from them. Oh, he doesn't. Yeah, way. okay. Um, I guess I... Hmm. I guess I'll try... And, well, I, I would have used my rope, so I'm not going to mm -hmm. wrangle him. Um. Mm -hmm. I guess even though I'm bad at it and I'll be at disadvantage, I guess I'll just try and intimidate him. Okay. Uh, you will have advantage from the fact that you are currently armed and standing over him. Okay. So it would be a, a straight roll for me. Mm -hmm. Still have to get under 25. Um, 23. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, so what do you say to this guy as you intimidate him? Uh, Best if you stay down, friend. <laughs> All right. I will count that, and we'll see what he does after I ask Davis what Davis wants to do. Uh... Actually, ask everyone what they want to do, and then we'll cut back to him. 
I'm uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk <laughs> over and uh to the to the guy trying to crawl away. I'm gonna put my foot on his back and my arrow at his head. Okay. All right. Uh, Cassidy, what do you want to do? This person is also by you because you were standing in the entrance. So he's kind of between the two of you, as it were, laying on the ground. Yeah, I will take a few more steps towards him, cock my gun, point at him, and I'll say, talk. Are you uh, going to make a roll of any kind or just, just saying the words? I want him to say something so we can hear how he talks. <laughs> Literally okay. just telling him. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. So, however, I don't know. Command. Yeah, no, no, no. Intimidate or... no, it would be a it would be a charm or intimidate would be the one of the okay. two things that you do. Um, what is command for? So command is actually to help other people. So command, you would give commands to your teammates. Got it. And for each degree of success you get, they get a bonus mm -hmm. to their threshold to do better at that thing. Because got it. Cool. Commands. So this is charm or intimidate, you said. Yeah, charm or intimidate. He's already uh, been intimidated. Yeah, Hamish already used intimidation. That doesn't mean you can't also intimidate. That's fine. But you could also use charm and play good cop, bad cop. Yeah, weirdly, I, I not weirdly, I'm going to do charm just to, right. yeah, just to change it up a little bit. And also because I don't know if you're, if you want someone to talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to, mm -hmm. yeah. It'd be, it's an interesting balance because in, in the, Hamish's case, he pushed him toward the like unfriendly side by scaring mm -hmm. him, but then you'd push him toward the friendly side, so he'd remain sort of in the middle, as it were. Okay. And this is the, how the good cop, bad cop would work with each other. Okay. Oh, my God. I swear. This is another 10. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> 16. All right. All right, so you've got both of your effects. I will deal with those in a second after I ask Amos what he wants to do. Okay, so let's see. Um, were y'all just intimidating the guy that got knocked off the horse? Or yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I've does got it my look foot like on the guy who's like squirming away? Okay, does it look like the guy on the horse is 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 behaving accordingly? Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, effectively, yeah. yeah. Like, I basically, I'm just wondering if I'm having, if I have to like, uh, uh, attempt to subdue him any further. Uh, not that guy. You're actually super close to the guy that was crawling away from you that is currently being pinned down by Davis. That guy is a different story. Okay. Um, I'm gonna like while holding my wrist, I'm actually gonna try to intimidate the guy who's crawling away from Davis on Davis's behalf. It's like, look, mm -hmm. you got me angry, and well, Davis, he's probably gonna shoot you. I'd recommend staying right put where you are. Okay. So you can also make an intimidate roll, but I will also grant you advantage because of your friend pointing an arrow at this guy's head. Mm-hmm. Um, and the disadvantage, is that just for physical stuff? Oh, that or... would be physical stuff. Yeah, it has no effect okay. on your social stuff. Okay. Uh, let's see. 34 under my uh, 55. So. Yeah. that's that's he, he just kind of slumps into the sand, and he's clearly surrendered. He says the words, actually, that Davis now mm. recognizes. He just shouted them. Um, but the guy on the ground, so we'll end the combat now and just turn to this scene where you're standing over people pointing guns at them. The guy on the ground says, hello. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I do see that I'm in a predicament here. I do believe we have our Anglo-Saxon. <laughs> 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 Where are they? Oh, uh, where are who? The miners. Oh, uh, well. So, about that, they are all dead. Excuse me. Them all. But, but you, you, you make an omelet, do you have to break a few eggs? Sling my rifle uh, off of my shoulder. It's like, you know, quick trivia for you. You can fire a rifle one-handed. 
that's, that's the truth. I, I, I don't know what to say. They, they're all dead. We killed them all. They're all dead. All right. Um... Mr. I'm going to put this as simple as I can. Uh, thankfully, there ain't no language barrier. So uh, you'll, you'll mostly understand. Um, now, I'm having a hard as heck time deciding why I shouldn't kill you right here. So maybe you could elaborate as to why we shouldn't murder you in an obscenely horrible way. Um, there's lots of water inside, and I can take you to the Messinus. Would that help? That's their leader, right? To start, you might want to explain why you uh, referred to gainfully employed human beings full of, up until recently, life and vim and vigor as eggs to be broken. What are y'all doing in there? Uh, we just wanted the mine and also the city. So when you make an omelet, you have to break a few eggs. Oh, so City you want to a lack of water? They will rise up, maybe take out the leadership. Simple plan, really, honestly. I uh, walk over with the. Uh, I don't know how to handle this guy who's ble like shot in, in the back and stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, I want to go over and pick up that dagger. Mm hmm and ask like what it is you so when you pick up the dagger um, i'm picking it can i pick it up with like a thing like a cloth sure. or something yeah yeah <laughs> grab some kind of cloth and whatever <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so yeah he he takes off his uh what he's wearing to like catch dust mm -hmm. and calico vest that. or something yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and uses that to pick it up and he goes well, what about this what can you tell me about this Oh, yes, that's the demon blade. Yes. The demon blade. And he smiles. He gives a smile. He's like, hey, yes. Can I go now? Oh. You're going to stop smiling, you hear? Nope. Yes, sir. I want to see not, not near one tooth from your stupid mouth. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, how many more folk inside there? Uh, there are none left. You killed them all. Good job. How truthful do I think this person is being to me? I mean, it seems pretty truthful. He does not seem to be hiding anything for you. Okay. Okay. But you'll take us to the leader, right? Yes, he's in San Andreas, um, starting a new empire. Potentially one with the white demon. I don't know. I was living in a blade. Until someone used it to kill someone, and then, whoosh, here I am. Was it this blade? Well, not that one. I think that one has uh, that that con fella. And then he puts it down, and he pulls out his notebook and begins just furiously writing notes. <laughs> they all have someone. Uh, that one there, I don't know. That one there, I think. Some Russian, I think. I'm not sure. Oh, wait. It's not Wait like we talk to each other when we're in the blades or anything. So you're telling me if I had if I had killed a man with that blade, would I have become British, or or would the person not killed become no, British? No, the, if you had killed with that blade, you would have become that 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 con fellow that 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 tried to take over the world many 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 years ago. Oh, huh. I'm glad I didn't kill nobody with that blade then. <laughs> Just wow. out of curiosity, what's your name, fellow? Uh, my name is is Ned Lowe. Nedlow, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, gotta... How did you get into the blade? I think someone killed me with it. I was a pirate. A long time ago. It took me a long time to realize that I've been dead for quite a while. A weird adjustment period, honestly. <laughs> well, bully for you. <clears throat> So was this plan to take over the mine and the town, was that yours or these? Yes, these numbskulls would not have been able to think of such a plan. We 
that'd be mine. Mm. Honestly, they, they didn't even realize that I had sort of broken away from the Masenis until well, yesterday, actually. Hmm. So, so in a way, you could say that all of this is your fault. Just... Yes, if I was being honest. Well, 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 ain't that neighborly of you to be honest? Well, we've got uh, some people who definitely would be interested in speaking with you. Do we? I turn to Davis and I say, "You think we bring him back to the town?" <sighs> I, I figured they'd appreciate it. I think they would, but. There's something about, uh, and this is me like being very quiet and like peering back over at him. There's something really dangerous about that man. He convinced this entire bandit horde to mm -hmm. take over this mine. Uh, I'm wary that he may cause more issues in the area if he were to somehow find some people to help him escape. Yeah. He is a I, pirate after all. I have that same concern. And also, the people we came here to rescue are already dead, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And uh, bringing the this person back seems to be putting other people at risk. In the way I see it, you know, if they want to ask questions, they already got uh, two folk back in town. Okay. Don't quite sit right with me, let... Don't quite sit right with me not letting them letting them uh, get an eyeful or an earful of exactly what what did it to them. Well, maybe. How about we try... that? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, uh, no, Cassidy, you going on? Maybe we had the same idea. Maybe we just tie him up real good and bring him back to the town. Yeah, yeah, and uh, let their justice sort of be served. My own, my only audible to that is uh, he says he can take us to take us to uh, take us to uh, what's his name? Mm. To the white demon. Mm hmm. I mean, if in, we're fixing to head that way anyways. Do we trust him? No, we absolutely not, do not. But not we as far know as that I our go. survival, at least for the time being, is also tied with his. So we keep an eye on him. We put him on the back of one of the horses and we just watch him carefully is what I would say. All that right. Sounds... So now the question is sounds... back to town or follow hmm. the white demon? Well, I imagine we go back to town, get our reward, and then we can mosey on any direction we feel. All right. All right. Sounds good to me. Well, well, listen here, Mr. Ned Lowe. At the very least, <laughs> at the very least, given the absence of water, you will avoid keel hauling. Don't know about anything else you'll avoid at this point. Okay. So, are we off to San Andreas then? Not quite. And then uh, I sort of give a sign to uh, Hamish to get the rope to hog tie him. Yeah. And I think we're getting ready to head back. All right. Ham Hamish gets the rope and he's like, do we need that other one? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> I feel bad for him. He's shot well, in the knees and yeah, the he's, back. <laughs> he's got a couple of arrows in him. I, I just go, uh, I know he doesn't understand me. And I'm just like, now listen, mister. Uh, I don't know how far you're going to make it, but there's a horse run out there somewhere. So. Good luck. And I just kind of push him into the desert. <laughs> oh, no. Stumbles to this bad knee, bleeding out of his chest, one arm not working properly as he walks in some random direction. Actually, before he stumbles too far, I'm going to just kind of grab him by the back of, like, the, the kind of the scruff of his garment and be like, actually, if he makes it, if he makes it back, let, let, him, uh, let him serve as a... Uh, since we're, since it is entirely likely that we'll be hauling this this uh, this limey this limey sob with us to to uh, 
to our next destination. Let's let him serve as the uh, the uh, uh, the brunt of uh, whatever corporal punishment the town might want to dish out. Oh, yeah, that's horrible, but good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, so I think okay, we are but taking he ain't drinking none of my water. Uh, I'll give him some of mine. <laughs> <laughs> there are uh, let's let's move into a bit of an epilogue then to this story. Mm -hmm. There are a number of horses still in the cave, and so you you if you wanted to, you'd be able to get them out and you know make a nice little tie up to be able to to lead them all, or you know just Amos's general control over several horses. Um, to be able to lead them all back into town. The council is disappointed that you weren't able to save the miners, but at the same time, some of them were more realistic and thought that you probably wouldn't find them alive anyway. However, the return of the horses does yield quite a bit of bounty, namely a barrel per, and there were uh, eight of them, as a matter of fact. Nice. Yeah. So there's quite a bit of bounty that you get from these horses that you return. Plus the four that you borrowed, right? Those don't count towards your bounty, but they do um, count. Uh, and so you get a decent reward, and they do take your um, guy with the arrows in him as, you know, the person that you brought back alive, assuming that you stashed Ned somewhere and yeah. maybe had somebody watch over him. I don't know why they call him parts. English, but he don't talk in English. <laughs> 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 and so after you get your bounty and, you know, sort of clear your space in New Jing, you have a new plan for yourselves as you head out into the desert towards San Andreas, where perhaps with the help of this pirate now controlling the body of some random Persian guy, uh, meet the Mosenus and potentially find the White Demon. But today, you know more now and you have survived as the few who have survived the curse. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yay. Yay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so that was much so for fun. running that for us. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys for playing. That was a wonderful game. And you can find out more about this game. Uh, it's currently, The Few and the Cursed is uh, available on Kickstarter. You can hit exclamation point RPG ES uh, in chat if you want to find out more or back it yourself. There's still uh, quite a few days left in the campaign if you want to get in on that uh, or find out more just by reading the campaign page. But let's go around one more time and, and you can tell people uh, where they can find you and and what uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, we'll start with Scott. Hi. Okay, so I am Hero170 on Instagram and pretty much Hero170 or Hero 2020 in a lot of places. Uh, you can find me on the social medias, essentially, or Scott Ewells on the Facebook, if that's where you are. Uh, and then we'll go Randy. Hey, everybody. Randy Alvarenga. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at RollerRaja. That's R-O-L-L-E-R-R-A-J-A. Uh, to see some really cool stuff. Halloween, I mean, this month is almost over, but there's still a few more projects going on, and you can find out about them on Twitter. Awesome. Aliza. Hey, I'm Aliza Pearl. You can find me at Aliza Pearl on Twitter and Instagram. It's A L I Z as in Zebra A. And uh, oh, and on TikTok, the real Aliza Pearl. Uh, you can find me next, uh, oh yeah, Mondays, playing an alien RPG game called Beacon. Uh, with the stream punks over on queue time and i have some more games coming up that i can't quite announce yet but soon super soon uh so definitely follow me to to check out what's next to come and thank you so much for having me here this has been so fun to play with you all uh ronald hi folks ronald neely you can find me on the internet as dj regular that's on twitter uh itch.io is where you can find my games also mm -hmm. i have a website uh djregular.tech tech short for technology why is it te dot tech and not dot com mind your business that's why um <laughs> And uh, you will see me next uh, November 5th for the uh, Saving Throw uh, Marathon. Um, I'll be playing Riz Rippers Resurrected with a gang of exciting folks. Uh, hope to see you there. Awesome. 
Uh, you can find me, mostly Eric, on, all, all, on most of the social media platforms. And I will also be here November 5th uh, playing in our Lord of the Rings one shot, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, but thank you all so much for tuning in, hanging out, and, and uh, checking out this game. We hope you enjoyed watching us play. Uh, and uh, until the next time we see you, you all have a wonderful rest of your night. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.